Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we're going to take a look at a prototype version of what could have been the new and improved US Marine Corps standard issue China Lake 40mm launcher. So if you're not familiar with the China Lake, first off you should go back and watch the video that we did not that long ago on the standard, if there is such a thing, China Lake pump action 40mm grenade launcher. This was developed in 1967. Manufactured in 1968, a total of two dozen originals were made, and it was probably the coolest weapon used by the SEALs in Vietnam. However, after Vietnam, this gun kind of goes away. It's replaced by the M203. Now, an effort uh, came up in the early 2000s, actually kind of started in the 90s, um, of a couple individuals who got their hands on some of the information about the China Lake and wanted to reproduce it because it was awesome. And they ended up going through and doing this. And in the process, well, so they start with one of them, uh, one hand-built prototype, and it's it's pretty cool. And they decide, okay, well, we'll build, we'll build a couple. Uh, and then this kind of escalates, and a lot of people are obviously interested in this, because who wouldn't want one? And it goes from one to two to three to ten to fifty. And by the time it gets to 50, like now they've got a little bit of an issue. Uh, the original, the first one, was made by basically a master machinist, all hand-built. Well, you're not going to do 50 like that. They wanted to get an actual, you know, a, a setup for a proper production run. And so they start looking into how are we going to get the different parts, things like the front sight. Well, okay, we can find old M203 front sight or rear sight assemblies, take care of that. Butt stocks, who do we contract with to make 50 custom butt stocks. That. Well, the biggest hurdle ends up being barrels, having to make 40 millimeter barrels, because they weren't, they didn't have a source to buy them off the shelf. And barrel manufacturers would say, oh yeah, we can do that. And then they'd look at it and be like, hmm, yeah, not so much. Like, we're not set up for 40 millimeter, because there are not very many companies that do. There's not much demand for 40 millimeter barrels. Well, in the end, they end up getting in contact with a company called Airtronic, which was at the time the prime contractor for the US Army to make M203 grenade launchers. And this is like a perfect setup. These guys are already making tens of thousands of 40mm launchers, they've got the barrels in production. And Airtronic looks at this and goes, that's pretty cool, we can make the whole thing. And so what started off as a basically a hobby of, hey, we got access to one of these at a museum, uh, you know, the, the museum curator is really cool, we're legit historians, we want to make one as a reproduction, like making one, this turns now into a full-on manufacturing endeavor. So the three original guys, uh, the gunsmith or machinist was Brian Fauci, uh, the guy with access to the gun was uh, Dutch Hillenberg, and the finance behind it was Captain Monty Mendenhall. These three guys form a company called Trident Enterprises, and they enter into an agreement with Airtronic. Basically, they're going to get a royalty, Airtronic's going to make China Lake grenade launchers. And what's really interesting is this is right getting into this time when the US Marine Corps is starting to look for grenade launchers. Uh, right after the, the Battle of Fallujah, the Marine Corps basically says, hey, we want to be able to, we want a rapid fire grenade launching system. You know, we can engage multiple targets quickly. What's out there and available? Well, Hillenburg had taken one of these guys to SHOT Show not that long before, basically to show it off because it's awesome. Uh, they set it up on, I think it was DSA's table, and the guy who would end up being the Marine Corps procurement officer in charge of finding a multi-shot grenade launcher saw it at SHOT Show. And he thought it was cool. It wasn't something he was working on at the time, but he remembered it. And a couple years later, he ends up in charge of this procurement program. And does some backtracing, like, I remember that thing, and ends up uh, learning that Airtronic is set up to be making these things. And what he says basically is, all right, you know what, that China Lake, this, this is what we want. I want this, give me these. Probably slightly modified. Uh, there were a couple little problems with the originals. Fix those up, boom, done. But we have to have a competition, you know, to make it all formal and proper. Because maybe there is some magic bullet out there, but the China Lake is what I want. Just give me those. Well, unfortunately, this is where the project kind of falls apart. So Airtronic, instead of what started as we're just going to remanufacture the originals as replicas, uh, you know, 
functional replicas, turns into, well, we can tweak it a little bit to improve it, like fixing the takedown issues. And then it continues to tweak to like, oh, well, you know, the arm, the Marine Corps, they kind of want to also be able to launch flares. So we have to figure out a way to modify the design so we can fit an over-length projectile single loading rather than in the magazine. So how do we do that? Okay. And then it goes even farther to, ah, we want to design this to be able to fire the high pressure grenade grenades that are used uh, in the grenade machine guns. And that's where things really kind of take a turn. So uh, at this point, let's take a closer look at this. This is in fact uh, the first prototype that Airtronic did of their modernized China Lake 40 millimeter. So this is a prototype. This is what Airtronics was working on, and this is about as far as the project got. Now, the gun is all made out of aluminum, which is true of the original China Lakes as well. Of course, this one's still in the white because it's just a prototype. Had it actually gone into production, it would have probably been finished something like this. Now, there are a couple of modifications that they made. One of them, of course, is this big, clunky Vietnam-era front sight, or rear sight. It's mounted out at the front, so I keep calling it a front sight. Instead, the Airtronics updated version has Picatinny rail on it, both back here on the receiver and out here on the barrel. And that makes a ton of sense. Today you would you'd use this with a modern red dot style of sight, which is exactly uh, what the Marine Corps, the Mil Corps M32 and M32A1 use. It's, that's the obvious solution, so that's a really good improvement. The back end of the gun was redesigned so that instead of using a wooden stock like the Remington 870 derived stock of the original guns, instead this uses a standard AR-15 buffer tube, uh, lock nut, and pistol grip, which I think is also a pretty good idea. A pistol grip would make this, in my opinion, a better handling, more controllable gun. Uh, now the original safety was mounted on the top tang, right here. You can see that Airtronic has this machined in place, but I suspect what happened is someone realized, you know, if you've got a traditional stock and you're holding the gun like this, that safety is in a nice convenient position. But if you've got a pistol grip down here, now it's not. And so what Airtronic did is they refitted this particular gun with an M203 style safety. I think that also makes a lot of sense. Just for the record, there are two markings on this. This is one batch of them where Airtronic registered it, of course. And then in lieu of any better idea, they went ahead and named it the 4x40 with a little lightning bolt coming off the X, and they have engraved that into the magazine cap there. One other modification that Airtronic decided to make, which is fairly substantial and I think a terrible idea, is to actually lengthen uh, the receiver and the feed system because they wanted to make uh, the modernized version compatible with standard high pressure grenades. Instead of the, the high-low, uh, the 40, mil, 40 by 46 that's used in uh, the M203, all the underbarrel launchers, they wanted it to use the same ammunition that's used in the grenade machine guns. It is a far higher pressure system. Uh, if you haven't seen the video I did on the uh, M79 where we talk about how that 40 by 46 cartridge works, it basically has a, a chamber pressure of 3000 psi, which is low enough that you can use aluminum barrels barrels down there, but uh, the high pressure cannot. And I think this would have been a horrifically dangerous gun the first time someone fired it. But you can see here on the original China Lakes, uh, they have expanded, they have lengthened the receiver. The safety mechanism for those high pressure grenades is that they are longer and they will not fit in a, a short chambered launcher. And so I don't know exactly which chamber has been cut into the barrel of this gun, but the feed system is set up to actually feed high pressure grenades. The one other modification that they made uh, was to a, one of probably the most significant flaw in the original China Lake, which is this disassembly mechanism, which is based on the trigger guard itself. This is an aluminum piece, it was prone to damage, and if it was bent, the gun could disassemble itself when you went to try and cycle it. As you can see here, the trigger guard is now a single solid piece, not subject to that problem. To be honest, this is obviously a prototype and it's missing some parts. I don't see exactly what the disassembly mechanism was. They may well have just screwed this one together um, as a, a temporary solution, but uh, had the project gone forward, one of the major things to do would have been to improve the disassembly mechanism uh, to prevent, to, to remediate the problems on the original design. 
Where this ended up, unfortunately, was in court, when it should have been going to the US Marine Corps for trials. Uh, there was apparently some misunderstanding on the part of uh, Airtronics uh, as to who exactly owned, like whether they had purchased the rights to this or licensed it from Trident. Uh, the two groups ended up in a, a rather unpleasant split. Uh, a significant court battle ensued. And the worst outcome of this, of course, is that both parties got screwed by it because Airtronic never ended up actually submitting anything to the Marine Corps. And while the two parties were busy fighting it out in court, the Marine Corps ended up adopting what became the M32A1 from Milcor. So to go back a little bit, when uh, initially, shortly after Fallujah, about 2006, the Marine Corps was looking for an off-the-shelf solution for a multiple grenade launcher, and the only company that responded with an option was Milcor. Uh, and that was the MGL-140, which, by the way, we have a previous video on. So if you're interested in what they ended up using, you can check that out. Uh, that was really sort of an, initi an initial uh, small purchase of about 200 guns and trials, field trials in Iraq. And then they come back and say, okay, we want to make these changes. And that was the time when there was an opportunity to present a gun like this as a competitive different option and have this adopted instead of widespread adoption of the Milcor gun. Instead, this was never submitted. Uh, a number of modifications, small modifications, were made to the Milcor. Uh, it became the Navy Mark 14 Mod Zero, which was then basically adopted uh, as the M32A1. So sadly, like I, I think this certainly had a tremendous amount of potential. The Milcor is a good functioning gun, but it is a rather awkward thing to carry around, to load. Uh, and I think there was really a lot of potential for a modernized China Lake. It's really unfortunate that all that came of the project was basically this one prototype. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you haven't seen the videos we have on some of the other 40mm launchers, definitely take some time to check those out, and thanks for watching.